punish anyone who blocks my path. The blood that flows through her veins is special and extremely dangerous. If showing pity would put my allies in danger, I will not hesitate to kill her. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem Three Houses. We have successfully rescued Flane and Monica, one of which is a really good thing. But that Death Knight person feels so familiar. It is interesting that they never really resolve who he is, even though, like, everyone knows who he is. You found Flame? Oh, thank goodness. She was unconscious at the end of that secret passage. We found the culprit, too, but he got away. I still kind of love the fact that it was like, you found Flane? Thank goodness. And it's like, at the beginning gutscene, you see Flane laying in the passage, and then you go into the map, and there's like 80 billion guys between the two of you. <laughs> Almost had him. I'm just grateful that everyone is safe. That's what matters most. I wonder if you saw that line if people actually legit do die. I'd like to hear what transpired, but first, we need to get these ladies to the infirmary. What ladies? There's only two ladies on screen and they're both fine. Understood. We'll go at once. <sighs> I'm... I'm sorry, Professor. I'm so relieved I suddenly felt weak. I couldn't be happier with how things turned out. And I imagine no one will be more overjoyed than Seti. Oh, I'm, I'm certain about that. <laughs> hey, Professor. Can you make that expression one more time? What? I don't think I've ever seen your face like that. I don't think I remember this with Claude. <laughs> I apologize. I've forgotten myself and come dangerously close to teasing you. It's just... I've never seen you look so happy before. It's downright mesmerizing. Dimitri's being weird. Ah, but this isn't a time for idle chit-chat. We must hurry and share the good news with Seteth. One help. Professor, please allow me to express my eternal gratitude once more. Flane is safe and sound, and I have you to thank for that. Mere words could never express how thankful I am. I... I am indebted to you. And this is for me when Seth becomes entirely tolerable, because he actually accepts you. Oh my god, beginning of the game I get so vermin with him. Yes, indeed. I... I too am overjoyed. Yeah, that is the golden question, especially the two of you share a bloodline. The was the masked knight who vanished during the rite of rebirth. The one known as the Death Knight. Considering the circumstances, it seems plausible to assume that his true identity is Yuritsa. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what we all figured a long time ago. It's just, again, kind of surprising they never confirm it. And we cannot forget about the mysterious Flame Emperor. His true motives are yet unclear. Yes, his. However, I have an idea. I believe the enemy may have been after Flane's blood. The blood that flows through her veins is special. It is extremely rare. And extremely dangerous. Why is it not the same blood that flows, flows through your blood veins? As brother and sister, they should have the same blood. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If enemies who know the secrets of Flane's blood have appeared, our only option is to leave the monastery and go into hiding. Brother, wait. Flame, what are you doing here? You should be resting. But when has she ever listened to you? I do not like the path of your thoughts. I do not wish to live in some lonely, remote location where I never get to see anyone. Not ever again. If we stay here, you may be targeted again. Wouldn't it be better for the two of us to live in peace? Even if we ran off to some new secret location, there is no guarantee that they would not find us. Yeah, they could have put like a homing pigeon up her butt. That is why I believe it would be safest to stay in the monastery, where we are surrounded by capable knights and professors. And yeah, the monastery will definitely never fall, Wink. I see your point. I do. However... You know it is the only reasonable option. What if I were to join the professor's class? Because, what? with 
a professor like you nearby, I shall be safe no matter what foe should appear. I see. I am afraid you have a good point. <laughs> Says very upset. Professor, due to my position, I have closely scrutinized everything about you. After all that has happened, I must admit that you are indeed a trusted ally. So what say you? Can I entrust you with Flame's safety? Absolutely. I am so glad that Flame is safe. Yet I can't help but wonder what the story is about that other girl. She wore the uniform of the Academy. But who is she? Well done, Professor. I see that I was right to ask your class for assistance. So what were the other classes doing? <laughs> Why were they not helping? What could be more pressing than enemies under the monastery? I have been told that Manuela and Flane are recovering nicely. As is Monica. Always Monica. Monica, the girl you rescued along with Flane, is also a student of the Officer's Academy. However... She is a student from last year's class. She went missing just before she would have graduated. It never occurred to us that something might have happened to her at the monastery. We assumed she had run away. Oh, something definitely happened to her at the monastery. I never dreamed that we would find her. Not like this. Monica has asked to rejoin the Black Eagle House once she has fully recovered. Our enemies are still out there. So we must remain cautious and continue our investigation. However, we must also help the students to move on. I think we should all go out to some, like, small town where Leone grew up. After all, the Battle of the Eagle and oh. Lion will be held in Grander Field next month. I forgot that was here. Oh god, I'm gonna have to fight, like, both groups again. That, I do think whenever I play this again, I'm playing back on hard mode with Iron Man. Only because just the fights like that where they turn the entire field against you for no real reason. Erg. Yes. Students <coughs> will remember oh, excuse me, guys. the rest of their lives. Please guide them so that they may show us their best at the coming battle. So, you'll be going to Grander Field next month. You've never been there before, have you? Sure have it, Captain Gerald. There is unease in the western side of the Empire, but everything east of the capital, Anbar, is stable. Well, there was a noble rebellion a short while ago, but it didn't amount to much. Thanks to me. Sorry, but I've got my own mission, and it's far from Grander Field. The church has always been quick to make use of those who work for them. <laughs> What I'm more concerned about is finding out who among us is pulling the strings. Ever since the Rite of Rebirth, strange groups have been seen around Garrig Mach and elsewhere too. Define strange groups. There was also an incident where some knights investigating these suspicious strangers turned up dead. Not that it's likely. But if something like that ever happens to me... Yeah, I remember when I saw this conversation for the first time, I was like, well, you wouldn't bring this up unless something was definitely going to happen to you. Search this room. Every corner. Behind every shelf. I'm going to leave something for you. Don't get me wrong. I have no intention of dying. I know it would be too much to ask you to cheer up, but can you at least drop the serious... <laughs> well, I'll be. Was that a smile just now? <laughs> Got to spend more time with Gerald in this game. All right. Part one: White clouds, wyvern moon, field of the eagle and lion. From on high, flocks of wyverns roar in chorus and soar the pristine skies, heading south for the winter. Fodlan's children lend their hands to winter preparations by gathering firewood and catching fish from the river's cool waters. Yet all the while, their gazes are turned skyward, drawn to the magnificent sight above.
That, I, I get why they do it, but it always just seems pointless to me. To be completely honest, it's just like, oh, okay. Time is passing. Cool. I've never really gotten a linked attack except in, like, gambits. Oh, absolutely, Raphael. I can get you in my team. Professor. I was just going to come find you. Are you busy? I have a question about formations. I don't understand them at all. I think we've seen this before. Are the speed of battle and the terrain connected somehow? There's too much to memorize. It is funny. This is obviously not when they expected you to get when Raphael's not in your house yet, because it's like, why is he seeking me out? I'm not his teacher. I don't? Then what do I have to know? I think I understand the basics. To start, you just... Ah, okay. I think I've got it. Thanks for the help, Professor. Brains and brawn. You've really got it all. <laughs> With your help, I should have no trouble becoming a proper knight. I want to be a knight. Huh? Didn't I tell you? My parents were merchants of the Alliance. They died in an accident. Again, have you forgotten that we don't- we're not actually a professor, we haven't really hung out? That's why it's up to me to look after my little sis. I'm not great with bookkeeping, so I don't think I'd make a good merchant. I talked to Grandpa, and he suggested I become a knight. So I sold all our valuables and used the money to pay my way into the academy. My sis won't survive if I get kicked out. So I can't give up now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you totally didn't die in the last campaign. Your sister didn't end up a prostitute on the streets. I promise. Just put that out of your mind. Definitely never happened. I might have tried being a mercenary if I didn't have my little sis to look after. I probably shouldn't say this, but being a mercenary does sound like an easier life. Mercenaries have no responsibilities and no one else to worry about. But someone's got to take care of my little sis. So, that's out of the question. Serving as a knight in a noble house is more secure. And you don't have to worry about dying, unless there's a war. There always is. My sis has been through so much. I don't want her to have to worry about me. Hey, do you have any siblings, Professor? Only the girl in my head. Then you probably think I'm missing out on my freedom, having to support her, huh? Not really, I think it's, I think it's very nice. But working hard for my sister isn't too bad. Call it a burden, call it a challenge. If it makes my sister happy, I'm happy too. You should ask your father to have some more kids. <laughs> anyway, that's why I've got to become a proper knight. Oh, who wants to hang out now? The battle of the eagle and lion is finally upon us. This is our chance to show off the results of your expert training, Professor. Have Lady Rhea and Seteth really not filled you in? Well, if that's the case, I'm happy to explain. Again, that's one of those things, I'm like, they literally just told us about it for three seconds ago. Why can I not acknowledge that I know about this? The battle of the eagle and lion takes place every year during the Wyvern Moon. It can be best described as a mock battle between the three houses. Preparation for the real battle that will come in the second part. Much like the one we had during the Great Tree Moon. Do you remember, Professor? This time everyone will be there. This battle will take place in Empire territory, at Grander Field. In other words, far removed from the monastery. It's a mock battle between the three houses. The house that defeats the most opponents wins. Not last man standing. Your Highness, if the rumors are true, I believe Professor Manuela and Professor Hanneman will not be joining us. Ah, yes. Right you are. Given recent events, Professor Manuela has opted to sit this one out. Since she won't be present, Professor Hanneman has decided to skip this year as well. Oh, don't worry about us. You know you want to see the kids in action. See them without being there. Professor Manuela! Are you feeling better already? Thanks to all of you. But I'd only be a burden out there. My students don't need to see me collapsed. Well, not on the battlefield anyway. God damn it. In that case, perhaps it is best that you sit this one out. Correct. 
we will not be participating. Regardless, do not expect victory to come easily, or at all. Especially because you guys are going to cheat and ally. Well put. We've spent the past few months pushing our students to their limits. You can see me in the infirmary after they destroy you. We have taught our students well. There is no need to hold back. Challenge them with everything you have. It all seems weird. Aw, happy birthday, Larshi. Larshi, it's your birthday. Alright, so as always. Oh. Aren't because they're waiting on S rank. Dash. Hey, Professor. Did I ever tell you what happened with that thief? Did not, sir. No, you didn't. I remember the thief. I went after him, and I did manage to catch up, but... Sort of. I actually decided not to make him pay for it. Why? Ash, you were entirely too nice and boy. <laughs> My pockets were pretty empty after that incident, if you want to know the truth. Well, what happened was, when I caught him, I asked him why he stole the book. He said he thought it would fetch a good price, and that he really needed the money. He had a sick kid and couldn't pay for medicine. Everyone's got a story that doesn't mean they can go out and steal things. No, oh, maybe you're right. But if he really did have a sick child, that would be a matter of life and death. What? Ash, stop being so gullible. A little money is nothing compared to that. I'd rather believe a lie than risk someone's life if I'm wrong. And to be completely honest, there was a time when I wasn't so different from him. Ash is such a gullible good person. It was a long time ago, and I've put all that behind me now. But yes, I was. My parents died of illness, so I had to provide for my little brother and sister. I did my best to earn money for them legitimately, but I wasn't able to bring home enough. So I turned to thieving. From people on the streets, from shops, even from soldiers. Maybe I should make you my thief. I knew it was wrong, but seeing my brother and sister's smiling faces made me too happy to stop. Definitely wrong. I'm a professor, I got some little model. I regret that part of my life. I was stupid. But shortly after I turned nine, I crept into a local noble's mansion. Holy crap, we're talking about when you were eight? Whatever I could get my hands on. The noble had all sorts of valuables. But what really caught my eye was a book with a fancy cover. That book was Lug and the Maiden of Wind. The night in the illustrations was so impressive, <laughs> I just couldn't tear my eyes away. So you got adopted by Lord Lenato? Go on. You probably see where this is going. Moments after I grabbed the book, I was caught in the act by the noble. And that noble was none other than Lenato. Yep, I pay attention. I know what's going on. But Lenato was incredibly kind. Without asking any questions, he gave me the book. And money, too. When I told him I couldn't read, he invited me into his mansion, along with my brother and sister. He taught me how to read, personally. Wow. He does seem like a decent person. I'm kind of glad, or kind of, kind of sad that I had to kill him. So, with the thief I caught in town, I was trying to do the same thing. To be like Lenato. Just trying to be a knight. And it's the knight in your dreams, not the knight in reality. I want to make up for the bad things I've done. To leave this world better than I found it. That's why, even if it wasn't easy on my pockets, I'm proud to say I helped him. I know what you're trying to say. I didn't have a good answer there. My contribution probably won't change much. I have to, though. And it's not like I have the money to help everyone who's suffering from poverty. Even so, I can't bear to stand by and do nothing. What else could I have done, Professor? I guess that's true. I still feel like you got scammed, though. Definitely feel like Ash got scammed. 
All right, once again, we just head straight down. Oh, the first of the bees. And Raphael got to rank C. Ingrid, I've been doing some thinking, and it occurs to me that I owe you an apology. What? Why do you seem so serious? In a just world, you would be happily married to Glenn. How is that your fault? He... He truly loved you. And it's clear that you care deeply for him as well. But on that awful night, he died right before my eyes. I could do nothing to prevent it. In a way, I'm responsible for you losing the joyous... Petri, shut the hell up. Course. Like, no. I know my words can change nothing, but... I'm so sorry, Ingrid. I... Your weakness is not a cause for bad things to happen. You don't have a, like, obligation to prevent all the bad in the world. No, your highness. There's... there's no need to apologize. Glenn's death. It still doesn't feel real. I always looked up to Glenn. He was the very picture of a perfect knight. Noble and virtuous. In the end, he laid down his life. The ultimate sacrifice. I feel proud of him in ways that words can't quantify. Proud? Truly? That's right. I feel proud that he died for those he was sworn to protect. Proud that he passed from this realm to the next as a perfect knight. That's definitely going to be the story that she wants to emulate. Are you really trying to turn his needless death into an ideal to uphold? Ugh, you and he are so alike. They're in love. Needless death? How can you say that? Glenn gave his life for you, for everyone, and this is how you speak of his sacrifice? You weren't there. You didn't witness his last moments. If you had, you wouldn't feel that way. But what were they? What happened? I don't care to hear your interpretation of his final moments. He was and will always be an ideal knight. Stop confusing my opinion with your facts. You would do well to rethink that ideal, my friend. Pardon me? He served in your guard. He took great pride in what he did. In protecting you. The very least you can do is not spit on his memory. If you'll excuse me. It is interesting. They're both right, but she should really listen to him to find out what actually happened before she goes yelling at him for not honoring the things she doesn't know about. What is the matter with me? That one with Rafa, Rafa, Raphael. Hey, Dimitri. I heard about what you did. Hmm? What are you talking about, Raphael? Some folks are saying you lifted a whole wagon on your own. And you made it look easy. <laughs> really? Ah. I suppose I do recall something like that. I happened across a toppled wagon, you see. Those people needed my aid, so I aided them. But what of it? You gotta teach me your training secrets. I want to build muscles like that. <laughs> you want my training secrets? So you can build more muscle? I mean, do you need it, Rafa? Have you looked at yourself? I'm sorry, but I honestly don't think I can offer anything that would help you. The royal family has always been blessed with immense strength. I imagine it's largely due to our blood, and perhaps our crests. No, oh, come on. You don't have to keep your secrets from me. <laughs> As I said, I really wish I could help, but... Look, logistics aside, why are you so interested in my strength to begin with? Oh, he can have it too. I want to be really strong like you. I don't just wanna. I gotta. I've had to provide for my little sis ever since our parents died. If I want to do that, I gotta get strong so I can become a knight. I see. In that case, I suppose I could try to help you. Though I meant it when I said I'm not sure I have much to offer. Whatever you got, he'll take. Really? Oh, yeah! I'm no expert on the topic of building muscle. Protein. That's all Akihiko's needs. Protein. However, for greater strength, you could try devoting more time to spear and sword training. You probably already know that, huh? No, of course you do. Let's see. As a child, I was forced to train by running through the mountains all night in heavy armor. You had to run all night in heavy armor? That sounds tough. What else did you do? Aside from that, 
I trained by lifting large boulders or carrying multiple barrels filled with rocks. Got it. I'm gonna give that a try right now. <laughs> Wait a moment. You don't want to push yourself too hard too quickly. You'll damage yourself if you're not careful. You shouldn't worry so much. I know my limits. I don't think you do. You never have. My muscles are gonna be so big after this. <laughs> Perhaps I should not have told him all that. Right, and the dude's got one with Ash, and that's it. And Ash getting all the time with people. <laughs> you don't like to talk much, huh, Dudu? I am not skilled in conversation. Any particular reason? Because I'm skilled at taking punches. Reason? Reason is for mages. I am not a mage. I am only here at the monastery because this is where His Highness wishes me to be. Many here are frightened of me. Disgusted by me. I grow weary of it. That makes sense. A lot of people hate Dusker. They shouldn't. We need to make them get over it. They think all kinds of terrible things. Some of them even think you kidnap and eat people. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> we sound like true monsters. Why are you smiling? Shouldn't it make you angry? I suppose. But he's gotten... It's probably a weary smile of, ah, oh, this again. If those people would just talk to you, I'm sure they'd change their minds. I'll admit that when I first got here, I found you kind of intimidating. That's just because he's massive. I didn't know if it was okay to talk to you. I hesitated. But like I said before, I just wanted to get to know you. And now that I have, I'm not scared at all. You just needed to get to know him? I am not very good at interesting conversation. We can work on that. Tell me about Dusker. What was your hometown like? Calm. More forested than Fargus. Each town had a specialty. Smithing. Fishing. You would be better off reading about it in a book. <laughs> Take a look. It's in a book. Okay, maybe you're right. But answer me one thing. You're a great cook and you learned at home. Why don't you make more Dusker-style food? As we have established, people hate Dusker. That's because they don't know them. They even know his Dusker style? Food by itself may be harmless, but it is better not to sow seeds of discontent. Ah, but the cuisine of Dusker is delicious. I'd really like to try more of it. I am pleased to hear you say so. I thought they'd started off by talking about food. I wondered why they weren't immediately. And then they did. Interesting. Okay. That may mean we have a paralogue available. Wow, they they got very far very fast. Guys are already up for rank A. Hello. Oh, hello. Have you been there long? I was absorbed in this book. Another silly legend? First of all, they're not silly. And second of all, no. It's an essay that speaks to uncommon and challenging battle scenarios. I've been researching such things since you proposed your unique strategy. I still like that Leone, like, knocked him into the ground. Listen to this. Your commander gives orders that put your hometown in extreme danger. Do you carry out the orders or protect your hometown? What nonsense. I was talking about real-world tactics, not some dumb ethical question. Whatever your personal feelings on the matter, I see similarities between such tactics and these dumb ethical questions. I feel like Felix just doesn't like thinking for himself. I haven't read beyond this one, but I think the obvious answer is to follow your commander. The duty and pride of being a knight demand that you follow orders, regardless of your own feelings. But if you're smarter than your commander, which Felix always is, because he's Felix. But if I were put in such a position, I don't know how I'd fare. In fact, were someone to carry out those orders, I know that I'd attempt to stop them. Stop bothering with all this. You're not meant to be a knight. Oh, wow. Go find a husband. Excuse me? You heard me. The better knight than you are, buddy. I know you hate the ideals of chivalry and pride. So much so, you prefer to escape your duty as your family's heir. 
You have no right to criticize me for my ideals. Perhaps not. I love it doesn't even try and die. He's like, yeah, maybe. At least I know not to heedlessly obey orders. I know not to romanticize blind obedience. My brother taught me to think for myself. Don't you dare bring Glenn into this. You're right. Forget it. And this has just been Ingrid's day of getting, like, kicked up with Glenn's memory. Go for her. Is the day of... So, yeah, that one we can't do. That one we can't do. Petra! Petra! Hey, Sylvain. Uh, can we talk? You're talking right now. What's up, Ash? Looking for more life tips? Uh, no. But I did want to thank you for coming to my aid in battle the other day. <laughs> that? No need to thank me for that. No, really, I insist. If you hadn't been there, I definitely would have been finished. Well, no, we're not playing on um, Iron Man. You really set a model for my training. I can only hope I'll be able to save someone like that someday. Many days. Again with the studying and the training? Also, you're an archer. Like, you should not expect to be put in that position. If you are, something's very wrong. You're so stubborn you make Ingrid and His Highness seem downright easygoing. My advice on the whole thing is to just follow your instincts. That's what I do. Look how well it's turned out for you. If someone's in trouble, I help them. You don't need to be a valiant knight to know that. Doesn't matter if the person is an ugly old man or the cutest girl you've ever seen. You help them. So you're saying... Help people in need. Everybody's the same, deep down. It's our job to help anyone who needs it. Ah. What? You're looking at me funny. Did I say something wrong? <laughs> You're proving you're a decent person, and Ash is confused. No, no, I'm just surprised, that's all. You're actually a much better person than I thought. Was that a compliment? I can't tell. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean any insult. I was just really impressed by what you said about helping people without even thinking. To jump in and help someone without any thought at all of reward. That is real virtue. The realist. <laughs> How did you say that with a straight face? I'd be embarrassed if I were you. Come on, Ash. You're an honest and overall great guy. You'll be an honest and overall great knight, too. Of course, people like you need to watch out for greedy people. Huh? Remember when I said I didn't need any thanks? Well, I didn't say anything about not wanting a reward. There's a girl, and we... We had a misunderstanding about who was allowed to date who, so, uh... Wait, you want Ash to give you a reward? I need to hang out in your room until everything calms down. Should only be a day. Or two. Tops. What? Sylvain? Come on, Ash. Remember? If someone's in trouble, you help them. You want to be a great knight, yeah? That's not the same type of trouble. Oh, fine. Since you helped me... No, he didn't! Just this once. Oh, I guess he didn't battle. All right, I knew I could count on you. You'll definitely be a great knight. He really would be a great person. If he could just stop all the scandal. And he's also got one with Petra. That surprised me, because he hasn't hung out with her that much. Is that Petra? Looks like she's out shopping. Hey there, young lady. Are you looking to buy, or would you rather cry? Just so you know, there's no beating my prices. Anna, calm down. Cry. Beating. Are you wanting to battle me? <laughs> As in a battle of wills? Trust me, kid. You don't want to waste your life trying to beat me at... Huh? Sword or bow? Which are you fighting with? You have skill with both, I am thinking. <laughs> Petra, what are you doing? Why are you fighting? What, what did she say? I was asked to be coming here and do the shopping, but then this merchant gave me her challenge. <laughs> huh? This has to be a misunderstanding. Look, I'll help you. What were you trying to buy? We are needing... vulneraries. Many people make use of them and our stock is lowly. I love Petra. Oh, got it. Just leave this to me. Come on, isn't that price a little high? Surely you can afford to go a bit lower. Are you kidding? This is even lower than my usual bargain rate. Really? 
because the shop over by the gates is selling the same item for a little more than half that. Guess I'll have to head back there after all. You're trying to take the clothes off my kid's back! Hey! Let's all take a deep breath. Here's the deal. I'll give you another 10% off. How's that? Make it 20% and you've got a deal. <laughs> hmm. You drive a hard bargain. Fine. 20%. But you better be grateful. The shopping was successful. You have my gratitude, Ash. I, I, I am looking forward to Black Eagle so I can have Petra in my group. I don't know if I'll get her this playthrough. Not a problem. I'm used to this sort of thing. <sighs> Bargaining for prices in Fodland is complicated. I am thankful for this bargain. Now the extra can be given back to our professor. I had learnings about the customs of Fodlin. I have gratitude for that, too. Uh, I wouldn't call it a custom, exactly. It's just a trick we commoners use to save money. Haggling is a trick? Efficiency with money is a wonderful culture. I promise you, it's really nothing special. Ash, on to Sylvain, who do you have? Oh god, you have Ingrid. Please don't bring up Flynn. She's had enough for today. That's a heavy sigh. Again. Probably annoyed that you haven't stopped her womanizing after you said you would. Yeah? That's the sigh of exhaustion after spending the past month apologizing for your behavior to, well, everyone. Apologizing? I've been pretty darn restrained lately. If by restraint you mean falling all over yourself to garner the attention of every passing female, then yes, you've been quite restrained. He didn't try for Leone. She got he's mad at him about it. Mark my words. The more you hurt people, the more weighty the repercussions will be. Your actions will come around to bite you. Ha! If I get bitten, that's all just part of the game. Heck, I had one girl's brother come after me with a pitchfork. <laughs> If you end up getting maimed or killed by a pitchfork, don't expect me at your funeral. Glenn used to make light of getting hurt too. Then one day, he got more than hurt. Now he's gone. I freaking knew. I was like, don't bring Glenn into this. I'm sorry. I was being... You're right. I know what it did to you when you died. It hurt to see you hurt and not be able to do anything. When you wouldn't even come out of your room to take care of your horse horsey be nice to the horse nothing affected me the way his passing affected me well i'm happy that you're better seeing you out and about helped me relax enough to be able to flirt with girls again oh, your predictability is utterly disappointing <laughs> when i finally stopped mourning you know what brought me back my concern for you me why are you concerned about him you know you can't get along without me following in your shadow and caring for Okay, you. that's fair, that's fair. You flirt with anything that has a pulse. Offend people left and right and constantly cause commotions. Huh. The truth really does hurt. Please, Sylvain. Consider your actions before you carry them out. And stop acting so nonchalant about getting hurt or killed. Promise me that. Okay. I promise. Again, guys. <laughs> you two haven't picked up anyone. Well, not really surprising. Ignatz as well. All right. Oh, God, Mercedes. I didn't realize okay, that. Mercy. This time we're going to be really good and get the supplies with no detours. Now, you can't trust Mercy to do anything right. You're so good at sticking to a plan. I should leave the shopping to you. You really, you really should. I'll stay out of your way and just browse. No browsing. Hey, that's not fair. I want to browse too. No browsing. <laughs> Looks like you girls are having a good time. Browse nosers. Um, that's a terrible idea, Rogue. What the hell? You're in the middle of the monastery going off against two knights. Uh, Annie, is this a friend of yours? I've never seen this person before. I'm sorry to be rude, but we're kind of busy. Wait a minute. I think you're shopping with money you stole. But no need to worry your pretty little heads. I'm just gonna have to take it back for us common folk. Are you stupid? 
Like, if there's noblemen at Garrig Mock, they are knights. Guarantee it. Step back, Mercy. This could get dangerous. Listen here, you. There's no way you can win against me. I'm glad that they didn't act freaked out. I don't want to fight you, but I will if I have to. So just back away. You think you can talk to me that way? I'm gonna... Oh, the knights are coming. What? No, just let them... Annie can freaking flambe him eight ways from Sunday. You don't have to run. She just needs to start a fire under that. I don't know what he was wearing. This is far enough. We should be safe. Why are you running? It was a rogue. Like, I promise that isn't some hardened bandit criminal if he's living in Garrig Mach. I hope so. But what were you thinking? That sort of behavior isn't like you at all. I just... I thought you were in danger, Mercy. You're actually blaming me for this? It's like I don't even know you anymore. Are you freaking kidding me? Mercy! I was just trying to protect you. And why are you ups... Treat this woman. Alright. Ignots. God, oh Susan. my, Ignots. You're in a hurry. Is something the matter? The professor wants us to gather at the training grounds. Didn't you hear? Of course I did. I'll head over in a bit. Uh, that's that's very um, prudent and obedient of you. Um, are you sure you want to wait? I can hear the professor calling. We're not needed until after the lunch hour. We have plenty of time. For what? Oh. I guess so. I was just panicking a bit. Oh, wait, I, wait, I thought I was calling right now. I wish I could be calm like you. How are you so unflappable? Well, rushing around doesn't help, does it? She's unflappable because, like, look at her. She's very, very, very reserved and demure. She do, she's not a flapper at all. I mostly try to stay out of everyone's way. There's no point in overexerting yourself. Anything that needs doing will get done eventually. Huh. So that's the secret to happiness. I don't know about a secret, I don't know about happiness. I suppose. But it's not nearly as philosophical as you make it sound. No, it's perfect. I feel like I don't quite fit in with other people. Oh, look at you talk. I got you through so many friendships in the last playthrough, and now you're like, I don't fit in. So in situations like this, where I have to talk to someone, I panic a little. Please, teach me how to be as calm and collected as you are. Well, it starts with being really boring. I shouldn't be nice to Mercedes, but I'm not going to be. Honestly, Ignatz, you're making this out to be much bigger than it is. I mostly just don't pay attention. If you're having problems in life, just be dumb is more trouble than it's worth. But you always seem so happy. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no need to apologize. Come on, let's head to the training grounds. I may slow you down now. All right. You don't have to rush. But I'm going to anyway. See you there. <laughs> Goodness, don't strain yourself. All right, we're done with Mercedes. So you also have one with Hilda. Interesting. And rank B as well. Ooh, you're keeping your room really tidy these days, Hilda. That's amazing. Did you find someone else to help? I'm pretty good at cleaning, I found out. I guess I was being lazy before. I figured that if I left it to somebody else, I might lose another <laughs> base. That's one, that actually reminds me, when I was a kid, the very first time my parents ever made me do the dishes, I used the wrong soap, um, because both the dish soap and the laundry soap were Dawn, I think, I forget, it was this, maybe Cascade, regardless, it was the same type of soap, um, obviously they looked different, but they just said, get the Cascade from under the counter, so I got the laundry soap Cascade, and man, we had suds all over the kitchen, and I never had to do dishes again. <laughs> I'm sorry again about that. And about all of the other things I knocked over, too. Yeah, the shelves and the chairs and my clothes and my makeup. Uh, I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. I put everything back, didn't I? 
<laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Holy crap, her bed is massive. I just looked at that. Her bed is bigger than, like... I don't know. It looks like a queen or a king-size bed. You know, Annette, you should try to be a little more selfish. Hmm? That was a quick change of subject. Listen to her, though. Hilda is smart when she wants to be. You said how hard you've been working not to disappoint your family. You cleaned my room, or tried to, because I was feeling overwhelmed. You're always taking on other people's burdens. Hmm, you might be right. It could be nice to do something for myself sometime. But if I hadn't tried hard for other people's sakes, maybe I wouldn't have tried at all. They're very trying, it's okay. I might not have made it this far. So really, I don't regret a thing. Who I am now is the sum of everything I've done. It's for all of us, though, but you never discount... I, mean, I shouldn't say that, but most things in life, even if they are bad, they the experience of living through badness will make you better. You're so soft-hearted, I guess that's yet. what they mean by whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> you really think so? Not great advice, do not cut off your own leg and be like, it didn't kill me! I didn't mean it as a compliment. But anyway, I just thought of something you can do for me. You can take a nap with me. Whoa! A nap? But I'm not done with my chores. Yeah, I could use a little shut-eye. And it feels nice to snuggle up with someone. Okay. I get you're trying to make her relax a little bit, but this is kind of coming out of... Like, if my friend was like this, I'd be like, dude, what? So, why don't we lie down for a bit? Are you sure it's okay to nap right now? I still have stuff to do for the professor. I am amazed that that is your objection. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Later I'll help you with your stuff, and it'll be done in no time. Oh, fine. Just for a bit. The sunlight coming through the window is awfully nice. Isn't it? Nothing better than a nice lazy nap in the middle of the day. Such a weird, like, social link. Yeah, it really is relaxing. I wonder if they could actually end up together. Already dozing. She must have needed this nap really bad. <gasps> I'm feeling a little drowsy myself. Sleep well, Annette. Right. And we're almost done. Okay, Ingrid's got the last two of these two. Makes sense. Ingrid's just getting Ingrid, going with everyone. You they're going to perform an opera in the cathedral. Uh, we are? Uh, they are. Yes, it's a small one, but I need some volunteers. Let me tell you, Alois is very excited. <laughs> He's already doing a ton of work for the show. I see. What's it about? Classic opera fair. A tragic love story. A princess who falls in love with a handsome commoner. Because they're always handsome. You can't ever fall in love with someone ugly unless they're Tyrion Lannister. But our princess... She carries the fate of her country on her shoulders. And no matter how in love she is, she can't just marry whoever she wants. Or can she? Dun dun dun! That's quite a story. Sounds tragic and beautiful. Who will be playing the princess? Obviously you. Me. Oh, never mind. I was a singer in an opera company, though I hope I'm not being too presumptuous casting myself. Even if you're not interested in being part of the production, you will come to see it, won't you? I'll come to see it. I'm asking everyone to dress up properly. I want it to be a stylish and elegant night. That does sound quite lovely. And I do want to go, but I, um... It's one night, go. Please, don't worry if you can't make it. I understand we're doing this on such short notice. No, no, it's not that. I just... Uh, I struggle with the elegant part of things. You've already got help from Hilda. It's not often that I do myself up in elegant clothing and makeup and such. If fashion's your concern, lady, you're in luck. I am? If you don't dress for the occasion, no one will take you seriously. I'll be taken seriously. But don't worry about a thing. I'll happily work my magic on you. Hey, magic. When it's time, I'll meet you in your room. We'll make you the most beautiful woman in the theater. Except for me. Oh, goodness. Okay. Oh, 
All right, and lastly... Uh-oh, watch out, Ash. She's gonna start, like, talking about, um... Night stuff with Ignaz now. Hey, Ignaz. What are you doing here? Uh, hello? Oh, you're painting. Ingrid, what are you doing here? He's painting. Oh, wait. I could ask you the same. I did ask you the same. Anyway, I'm just visiting the cathedral. I must say, that painting is looking wonderful. Ah, uh, don't look, don't look! Why not? It really looks great. Really? I wouldn't lie. Let me have a look. Oh, it's the statue of St. Saros. I hope you don't think I was ignoring you. When I'm painting, I get totally absorbed. Of course not. My feelings aren't hurt so easily. Hmm. What if you gave her a more edgy outfit? Shorten up her skirt or something? Ingrid, really? No, that would be improper. Ooh, and how about making her sword bigger? Oh, oh, turn her into a valiant knight. <laughs> but she's not a knight. Ah, oh, come on. Just this once? That's actually, Ingrid reminds me of myself. Um, it's even, it, I'm not good at art, so I always end up painting things as they are. But the whole point of art, and the reason it's not photography, photography? Photography! Um, is that you can change things and you can, you can not emulate reality. Because if you want to emulate reality, take a freaking photo. Exactly look like a knight. More like a maniacal demigod. Yeah, it just kind of came out that way. It's different. Not quite how I envisioned. <laughs> it's my fault. I should have stuck to my original idea. Yeah, be less impressionable. I'm sorry I pushed you, Ignatz. I'll leave you be. A sad opening. By herself. Oh, Raphael. Raphael isn't part of. Oh, I see, I see. Sneaky Ingrid. Mm, mm, this meat is so good. I wish I could send some home to my little sis. Raphael, what are you doing here? Eating, obviously. Come on. Oh, I was just enjoying some of this roast. Did you want a bite? No, no. I meant, what are you doing here? This isn't the dining hall. <laughs> That's funny. Of course I know this isn't the dining hall. Yeah, I love Raphael. Raphael's amazing. You know that, and yet you're stuffing your face here rather than where it's appropriate. But you're not even seated. Is that the best way to eat? If you think so, let's sit down. <sighs> you're missing the point. At least use a plate. How does that help? I don't have a plate with me. So there's nothing I can do about that now. But since when are you so proper, Ingrid? That's I was wondering that too. I'm like, she seems a weird one to be bringing up all these problems. I'm not proper at all. You're just downright crude. Have you no respect for yourself and your journey to knighthood? And you think proper table matters? I guess I, you would actually. That makes sense. Knights must work from a very young age to be upstanding in all facets. You are making a mockery of all that we stand for. You. Slow down. I can't do all this listening while I'm trying to eat. <laughs> Disgusting. Now you've spilled gravy all over your shoes and your chin. You better wipe that up. Ooh. Now you need everything to be neat and tidy? You're really particular. This has nothing to do with me. It's what's expected of a knight. Wait. All I have to do is be neat and tidy, and I can become a knight? <laughs> Forget all that studying, then. I'm just gonna work on being the neatest and tidiest one here. I wait. That that is not what I said. <laughs> oh, really? You're probably right. I shouldn't bother with the neat and tidy stuff. I love Raphael so much. You are impossible. All right, and lastly, still has it, but there's no one I can actually do anything with right now. It's a lie. Real quick, I want to see if I can recruit Raphael now. I, in theory, should be able to because we just had his rank two conversation.
Almost. There he is. Oh, dining hall. Why did I even question that? Professor. I will. I will definitely win that. But first, I have to go talk to Raphael. Out here. I can definitely give him a sack of rocks. There he is. Hey, you get the fish. In the For a lifetime of rocks. Oh, hey. Good to see you, Professor. I was just on my way to train, so. Seriously? All right, well, now I know I have to actually get him into some more support conversations first. Holy crap, Raphael, why are you so hard? See you next time, guys.